evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Arusha in Tanzania. And as you can see, because they're in Tanzania, I've got Topol the ASMR elephant here. Oops. Um, Topol, if it's been a while since Topol's been on my channel, so if you're on the newer side, you may not have seen Topol. Topol's ears are like this, and I'm gonna put him up to the mic so you can hear what his ears sound like. His amazing ASMR ears. Here we go. a great sound and he can also brush the mic with his trunk check this out I don't know which sound I like more so whenever we have elephants because elephants are my favorite we have Topol the ASMR elephant do a demonstration of his amazing ASMR ears. I'm just going like this in front of my mic, and it makes an amazing sound. So thank you, Tapu. And let's talk about amazing, amazing Arusha. Arusha, as you can see, is in northern Tanzania, in what I think is one of the most fascinating corners of the world, geographically. We have the Serengeti over here, we have Mount Kilimanjaro over here. And in the middle, you can see it's very mountainous with lots of big lakes. And that is because we are in the Great Rift Valley, which I feel like every time it comes up, I have to explain it, but it's an important thing to know. So the Horn of Africa is ripping apart from the continent. The plates are splitting apart, and it creates some very fascinating landscapes. You can see Lake Victoria is over here. It creates volcanoes. It creates these lakes, which we're going to talk about in a second. It creates pretty much this incredible landscape, and it is rife, at least in this area, like this area. This is Kenya up here. Loads of animals and interesting plant life, lots of cool um, trees and grasses. Like, think like the Lion King. You know, I'm pretty convinced that the Lion King is supposed to have been set, like, in this area here. Um, but I kind of low key think it's in Arusha. At least in the Gorogoro Conservation Area. But um, the part that I want to visit the most in Arusha is the Gorogoro Crater. You can see right here. And I'm not going to explain it. I'm going to let UNESCO explain it because it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I've got my tablet and we'll read it together. zoomed in. Can I fit the whole thing in? I'm gonna have to adjust this. One second. Okay. The Ngorongoro Conservation Area spans vast expanses of highland plains, savannas, savanna woodlands, and forests. Established in 1959 as a multiple land use area with wildlife coexisting with semi-nomadic Maasai pastoralists practicing traditional livestock grazing. It includes the spectacular Ngoro Goro Crater, the world's largest caldera. The property has global importance for biodiversity conservation due to the presence of globally threatened species, the density of wildlife inhabiting the area, and the annual migration of wildebeest, zebra, gazelles, and other animals into the northern plains. Ext 
extensive archaeological research has also yielded a long sequence of evidence of human evolution and human environment dynamics, including early hominid footprints dating back 3.6 million years. Let's check out some pictures here. We've got some baboons. Um, let's, let's see the lions. Some flamingos, which we're going to talk about in a second. These very iconic African cranes. It's the bird on Uganda's flag, including some silly birds here, Bustard. There's a big lion. Ostrich. Oh, we can't see. Ostrich. This cool stork. Wildebeest. Zebra. Of course, the elephants. What is this? All kinds of. There's a water buffalo. Over here is a hyena. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the Lion King is supposed to be set in the Gorgoro Conservation Area. I actually had a debate with my sister for whether it's in Masai Mara, which is what she believes. And I'm like, no, it's it, Simba lives in Gorgoro. She's like, I'm pretty sure it's in Masai Mara. And it's almost like same difference because they pretty much border each other. Here you can see some Maasai peoples also. Let me bring it a little closer. I don't think we have any pictures of Maasai people. Um, they are herders and they're semi-nomadic, so they do a lot of grazing. So this was their land since way, way before conservation was even an idea. There's a giraffe. So they are allowed to stay there and live their lives. Okay, I have to readjust this back so you can see our shuttle. You can probably still see it, but anyway, there we go. So that's Goro Goro. I'm desperate to visit Goro Goro. I think out of all the national parks in Africa, I think that's my number one with Kruger being number two. Um, it's, it's my dream to just explore this whole area. <laughs> to be honest. Um, not just Arusha, but Serengeti and Kilimanjaro. Um, I told you I'd mention the flamingo, so you can find the flamingos around the many lakes. There is a lake in the caldera of the crater, but you can see up here, this is Lake Natron. This is Lake Ayasi, I think it's pronounced. And this is Lake Manyara but there's lots and lots of other lakes. Now, these lakes are alkaline, which means that um, they're very salty. They are very, they're very alkaline. Right? Um, don't drink the water. Don't swim in it. It's, it's not good, but all of the algae that lives in these lakes allows for those flamingos to have that vibrant pink. Lake Natron in particular looks disgusting from above. Look at it on Google Earth. It just looks like you dropped like too many bath bombs in it and it's created this like reddish brown color. So it looks disgusting from above. But it of course helps out the wildlife. And that's of course because this land is being ripped apart. And you, you have all of that interesting kind of geothermal kind of things happening. Volcanoes and hot springs and such. Um, oh, also we have not Kilimanjaro, but its sister mountain, Mount Miru, is right here. Also an old volcano that's clearly blown its top, you'll see on Google Earth, but it's in the shadow of the city of Arusha, which is of course the capital the area. Um, let me see, any other geography? Well, the only other geography I have goes into history, so let's talk about it. We'll look at it on Google Earth, but it's somewhere around the lake in the throne are the Latoli footprints. And like it said on UNESCO, those are footprints from ancient hominids that have been preserved in the mud that's hardened so fascinating. But the real exciting things happen 
in Old Gorge. This area here in the Goro Goro Conservation Area. Many interesting bones have been found from very old hominids. The uh, most famous ones, I would say, found by the Leaky family, who are still digging there to this day. I think it's like the grandchildren now are digging, maybe even great-grandchildren by the point. Homo habilis was discovered here. Homo habilis was the first hominin known to have made tools. Well, look at some of those tools on the floor. And also the world's oldest human skull was found here. I think the world's oldest human bones were found in Morocco, I want to say, but like, I think that's the oldest complete skeleton. The oldest skull of a human was found in Old Gorge. So this could very well be our home of all of us as humans. We could have come from Arusha, which is fascinating to think about. This could very well be the THE cradle of humankind. Lots of places are called the cradle of humankind due to old archaeological finds. Uh, but this one could be THE, the cradle. This could be our cradle as a species. It's so cool. The early indigenous peoples, well the early, still live there. <laughs> the indigenous peoples that inhabit this area would have been the Meru, which of course with the mountains named after, and the Arusha, which the region is named after. And then of course on this side we have the Maasai, which we already talked about, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, we're gonna talk about them again next week in a video, so just hold that thought. And, um, you know, these people didn't really have a lot of contact with what was happening outside because further down the coast of Tanzania it was absolutely hopping with trade, you know, to all corners of the world, mainly like Indian Ocean cultures, cities and all of that. Um, slowly those people came inland to find slaves to sell at these ports, but I didn't really read any reports of that happening in this region. It could have happened, I just didn't read any of it. I tried to find some, um, I, I think it was more central than northern. But I could be wrong, I don't know, I didn't find any evidence. I didn't find any sources of that. I didn't really find anything about modern times until 1895. Uh, the Germans had officially like, taken control of this area by then. And a German named Kurt Johannes came to, uh, I guess, just assess the area. And he was attacked by an Arusha tribe. And two missionaries that were with him were killed. And he came back a year later with an absolute vengeance. And nearly wiped out the Arusha people. Uh, he established a town here to just kind of stick it to these people, to be like, we are settling and we're not leaving whether you like it or not. And he forced the survivors to build the Boma, which is like their fort, like a, a German wilderness fort, along with forcing them to build up the town in general. The Germans had control of the area until 1916. It was World War I. The British invaded and took over the German lands here in Africa. And it would eventually become part of a British mandate called Tanganyika, which Lake Tanganyika is... You can't see. It's just over here. It's literally like right there just off camera. They, they called the area Tanganyika, which is what the tan in Tanzania comes from. And that lasted, of course, until independence, and I want to say 1962, three, I didn't write it down. They would eventually change their name to Tanzania after they incorporated Zanzibar, but this area 
gained the nickname, at least Arusha gained the nickname, of the Switzerland of Africa. And that's because Arusha wound up becoming a site of many, many peace talks. Some of them were appointed by the UN. Some just congregated there. So pretty much whenever an area needs to have very serious negotiations involving peace, they happen in Arusha. Let me just list some. The Arusha Declaration of 1967, that's when Tanzania was officially uh, or officially became a socialist country. I think it's far more capitalist now, but that was the times, you know, the 60s. The Arusha of Accords of 1993 brought an official end to the Rwandan big, you know what, if you know Rwandan history, I don't want to get demonetized. Um, if I have to talk about um, mass horrors, if you know what I mean, I have to make a note of it and then they could partially demonetize my video. So, um, the, the horrific happenings in Rwanda were officially, officially settled here. I mean, they, they had calmed down, but the end of it happened here in Arusha. And then the United States set up the criminal tribunal of the happenings in Rwanda here in Arusha. So the, the people who had convicted horrific, horrific crimes in Rwanda were tried here in Arusha, and those lasted until 2014. Although I, I also read that there's still technically some that are happening, but the official um, tribunal ended in 2014. Then there was the 2015 Arusha Agreement, which helped to solidify South Sudan's government. South Sudan being a brand new country in 2011, it's still in a lot of chaos and turmoil over there, but they came to Arusha in 2015 to try to figure out, pardon me, I have an upset tummy. They tried to figure out political parties and elections and all of that here in Arusha. So that is mainly what the area is known for. It's known for peace negotiations and it's known for the incredible safaris and wildlife here in the mountains. So I can't wait to show you on Google Earth. I'm going to go take some Toms for my poor tummy. If you haven't seen, gosh, my video on Monday now, I'm filming this, obviously, uh, right after that. But I, I'm just getting over food poisoning, so my tummy is still very upset. I'm going to take a Toms and turn down the lights, and we're going to take a look at Google Earth and see beautiful Arusha. Let's go. All right, the Google Earth won't let me highlight the entire region, but you can see the dotted line there. <laughs> It'll let me highlight the city. But we're going to start off with zooming out so I can show you exactly where Arusha is located. If you're not quite sure where, Tanzania is within Africa. It's technically in Central Africa. You can see from above here the rift it's splitting through, creating these really huge lakes in the African Great Lakes region. And you can see from above the really interesting landscape, right? The dots of these big volcanic mountains. This kind of weird, mushy green landscape from above. Um, yeah. Here's Lake Natron. I promised you a gross lake. Ew. It is, this doesn't even do it. See, like, look, it looks like a weird galaxy bath bomb was dropped in this lake, and it looks nasty. It's not an attractive lake. These big alkaline lakes, you can see, like, AIC here. The others aren't so bad, they just kind of look dirty. But Lake Natron in particular is super salty super alkaline yeah it's don't don't drink that water don't go swimming in it it's really nasty let's find the late holy footprints while we're up here at lake natural i forget where they are to be honest i just remembered it's along the lake 
somewhere here. You might have to just type it in. There's a big volcano here. Might have to type it in. Why not? It'll save us. Le Toli Footprints. Let's see how close I was. Oh, I was completely off. <laughs> I was completely off. I thought they were by the lake. Well, just ignore me, okay? Let's start with the late holy footprints. Oh boy. Let's check them out. This is not the slideshow. See, I saw footprints by the lake. I know I did. But it was labeled late holy footprints. And now Google Earth's not loading. Everything's blurry. Really bad timing. Listen. I could have sworn. I could have sworn. Let me check again. Lake... Okay. It wasn't the Litoli footprints. It was the Lake Natron hominid footprints. I'm not crazy. <laughs> it was these footprints. These are the cool ones. I want to show you. Crazy. Just preserved here in this muddy volcanic landscape. Right? Obviously sanctioned off because we don't want that getting destroyed there's some of the flamingos there enjoying the weird algae of the lake big volcano in the distance there's a footprint what did it say 3.4 million years old at least the latolia compared to a human foot right i think someone has their bare foot next to one in this slideshow yeah so you can see it's you know i assume this is a grown man but Almost, almost like half the size. Very, very fascinating. Our very, very ancient ancestors, the ones where we all come from as a species. All of our common ancestors come from this corner of the world. And let's lead that into Olduvai Gorge. Some glow, glow. I promise you we're going to check it out. I think when I did my video on just Tanzania, we went here on Google Earth, but I'm pretty sure the pictures are all different, so. Very cool. Here's the Leaky Camp Living Museum, where I assume they're still looking for these little tiny bones, but the slideshow's not very interesting, so I'm not going to check it out. But this is Olduvai Gorge. This could be where we all come from, for all we know. There's an awesome museum here, Cradle of Humankind, with lots of incredible, incredible skulls. I just realized I left this light on. <laughs> I'm like, why is it so bright? There we go. Incredible skulls. I wish I could zoom in and, and read what skulls they are. There's this neat monument out in Old Vi Gorge of the skulls that have been found. And there's this big um, rock formation. There's like a big kind of theater seating outside the museum where you can sit and look out at the gorge. And this is one of the um, like rocky areas here. And I think it goes to show like the layers of the earth that have been slowly peeled back from the earth being ripped apart. You can see that deep in these rocks are buried our ancestors most likely. There could be way more. Oh, here's the, the theater sitting area where you can look out and look at this. So they've tried to, you know, fill in the blanks here of this hominid friend. Absolutely incredible. And an, an old friend here. <laughs> My goodness, those horns are massive. Imagine finding that in the ground. A depiction of what Olduvai Gorge would have looked like once upon a time. amazing skull and what this this head probably looked like Get some rhinos out here and we also have some bones looks like teeth here of some ancient animals big giraffe a lizard friend crazy interesting museum here so so cool and of course, I don't think, well, maybe it was, but it wasn't labeled the Homo habilis. 
Oh, I was going to show you the tools. Because the tools are in there. What did this other slide show? Hmm. Well, the homo habilis bones and the tools are in there as well. <laughs> Promise. Let me see if they're here. Nope. Okay. Very cool, though. I mean, they just look like rocks, but... Um, oh, here we go. See, I'm not crazy. <laughs> I knew there was another slide. That's the monument. The big skulls are out here. But we can see the... There's the lethal like, footprints there. Little friend saying hello. And this is what they're excavating in. This kind of landscape. Picking rock by rock by rock. And checking and examining. There's an old friend. You can also see where they filled in gaps, right? Because these bones are older than most things in the world today. Oh, wow. Some indigenous peoples there. See, there's their cattle. So they get to still live and graze here. Is this where we can see. No, okay. Well, somewhere. <laughs> There's, you can see the homo habilis. Let's head over to Goro Goro. Let's just check out the conservation area first. That's the crater, I believe. But there's beautiful zebras, and you can tell this is the crater because you can see the, the silhouette there in the background. Some lazy lions. The entryway, there's the monument we saw. Big Simba. Beautiful lakes here. Okay, it looks like most of these pictures are of the crater. There's some wildebeest. So let's check out this crater. The world's largest caldera, right? This is one big collapsed volcano. I assume that was like the center, which is now this big lake. Let's check out. There's lots of slideshows. Let's just do this one that says Gorgo Crater. Some zebras. As we say in America, for whatever reason. <laughs> Who knows why? There goes a little friend. The lion is checking out the safari here. Some little birdie friends that kind of look like dinosaurs. Some hippos. All kinds of animals just live in their lives. So, um, a lot of these animals just, like, came into the crater and have, like, lived here for millions, however long. But I feel like there are animals that just, like, lived here, like maybe these hippos. And just as this volcano just, like, receded, they just stayed, you know? <laughs> and now they're trapped in this crater. And yeah, it's just animals just out. Like, it's, it's like... <laughs> I'm such a nerd. It's like a Pokemon wilderness area. <laughs> but they're just everywhere. You just get to go and look and see all the little friends here. It's a dream come true to visit, from what I can tell. Beautiful Chita. And I, Ina. I would absolutely love to visit this area. And you just drive around and just see what you can find. All kinds of little Simbas and everything. Absolutely fascinating. One of my dream destinations. Check out Mount Mir real quick. There's Arusha National Park, but we're gonna look at Mount Mir, which, as you can see, was once upon a time a huge volcano. It's collapsed. I'm pretty sure it's the hi the fifth highest point in Africa. I think one of these slideshows will say that because I think there's a sign at the top saying you're at the fifth highest point in Africa. There we go. Yep. So that's what you're rewarded with, the climb. Majestic, majestic mountain. I feel like I read some sources that this was like a sacred site for the, the uh, like, the Arusha and Mira people, but I, I couldn't find any sources. I have no idea where I read that. I couldn't refind that fact, but it has like a mythological importance to these people. Surely Kilimanjaro as well, but I swear I read that Mira was the, like, very holy site. Or a group, but don't quote me on that. Look at this jungle area. Yeah, I want to come to Tanzania so bad. 
For me, it's South Africa, Egypt, Botswana, Tanzania, or like my four, and Algeria. <laughs> like, those are my dream African countries to visit. Let's end this video in Arusha, the city. Because I want to show you something neat. I'm going the wrong direction. Let me zoom out. Yep. There we go. There's Arusha. I'm going to show you the clock tower, which doesn't look very exciting. It's, when you think clock tower, you kind of think like Big Ben. It's not. <laughs> it's, um, not very exciting, but keep in mind, like, remember that many of these historic sites in Arusha were built under duress and forced labor, you know? But now it's a point of pride because according to legend, the Arusha clock tower, there's no mirror, specifically the clock tower, none of these are clocks, it's not a clock. <laughs> okay, let's, let's rewind here. <laughs> Go back to the clock tower. I love the pictures, but we're not looking. The Arusha clock tower, according to legend, according to geography legend, is the exact midpoint between Cairo and Cape Town. So it's one of those like centers of Africa. Here in the US, we have lots of sites that are like, we're the center of the US, you know. Technically by this geographical term, this is the center. Well, this is one of the Africa centers. Apparently the exact to the dot midpoint between Cairo and Cape Town, which if you don't know, Cairo is in the very, very north. Cape Town is about as south as you can get in Africa. Um, I think that's all I really wanted to show you. This cultural center is neat. It's a lot of art. You know what? I'm just going to end the video here. Um, it's beautiful art. It doesn't really have to do with Arusha history, which I like to show you guys history museums, you know more so than art museums. It doesn't mean I don't like art museums, but we'll end it here for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, oh my goodness, super. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. Wow. This is an ongoing series on my channel. We're visiting every corner of the world. And next we're going to be heading over to Oman. It's kind of funny because Oman used to own parts of Tanzania, but not this part of Tanzania and not that part of Oman. So, uh, But you all know I love Oman. Like if Tanzania is my one of my dream African countries, Oman is probably my number one, like a Middle Eastern Arabian country that I want to visit. So I'm always excited to talk about Oman. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video to be relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a good 